Welcome to the AIM Insight e-training series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training of your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This module is discussing the generating a track map function in Race Studio 2. Track maps are a valuable tool that allow you to view your actual track position directly linked to the cursor position in your data graphs. Race Studio 2 allows the generation of high quality, accurate track maps directly from your recorded data. Race Studio 2 also allows the full management of track maps including modifying, loading, or deleting existing maps in addition to creating new track maps. There are functions in Race Studio 2 that require a track map. Some are split times, track report, lap replay, and time compare. To generate track maps, you must have valid speed and lateral acceleration data or a GPS sensor. As you can see here, we are displaying GPS speed and lateral acceleration traces. A quick check to determine what speed information Race Studio 2 is using for the track map generation is to check the reference speed setting. To do this, select the Modify menu item. Then select the reference speed menu item. This will open the reference speed configuration window. In this window, you will see all of the valid speed channels. In this example, the GPS speed is the speed channel that is currently set. This is the speed channel that we want, so we will just click on the cancel button. Here we can also check to make sure we have a valid lateral acceleration channel and that it is calibrated correctly. As you can see here, our lateral acceleration channel looks pretty good, and where the vehicle is going down a straight section of the track, the lateral G values are very close to zero. As I mentioned earlier, there are functions in Race Studio 2 that require a track map. With the data we are currently looking at, we do not have a track map generated yet, and if we open the View pull-down menu, you will see some items that are grayed out. Let's click on the View menu item. As you can see here, the split times, track report, and lap replay menu items are grayed out and not available because we do not have a track map generated yet. So let's go ahead and generate a track map so all of those functions as well as the time compare function will become active. First, we select the map menu item. Then select the new menu item. This opens the Modify Track Map window. Every function you need to generate a track map is included in this window. Let's talk about the main parts of this window. First is the Graph and Map window. The graphs shown are the speed trace for the selected lap in blue and the lateral acceleration trace in green. These are provided so you can quickly see your positive and negative g-forces as well as your acceleration and deceleration zones. These will help you decide where to create your lap segments if you decide to not accept the segments automatically generated by the software. Here the software highlights in blue the selections for sensor information available and the style of track that it is determined is the best for creating a track map. Since this data has a GPS sensor, it has selected two wheels, speed and gyro requested. The number of wheels is not as important as the sensors the software is highlighting. Speed and a gyro is the preferred and most accurate method, but good track maps can also be generated with just a speed trace and lateral accelerometer sensors alone. Next to that is the three choices for the style of track. These are closed, figure eight, and open shaped. Closed is where the track starts and finishes at the same point and does not cross over itself at any point. The figure eight choice is for tracks that start and stop at the same position but cross over at some point and the open shape choice is for tracks that start at one point and finish at a different point. In this area all of the enabled laps are shown and the software automatically selected your best lap to generate this track map. You can select any of these enabled laps to generate a map, but typically your best lap is a good choice. Here you have three slider bars. The first bar is the track shape and allows you to fine tune the shape of the track. The second bar is the channel's threshold bar 
and this adjusts the threshold that the software uses for generating corner radius and straightaway length. The third bar is the corner identify bar, and this adjustment will affect when the corner segments end and the straight segments start. This is the rotation adjustment and is used if you want to rotate the map. This is the distance box and this allows you to place the cursor at a defined location to create segments. An example of this would be that if you want to place a segment exactly 500 feet past the starting line, just input 500 into this box and press the Move To button. The cursor will jump directly to that location. Then regardless if you place the cursor with the distance function or just by clicking on the map, you use the Modify Parts section to divide, remove, or remove all segments. The final choice in this area is this button. This button allows you to change the map segments from two different colors, red and blue, for corner segments, and straight segments that are green. This is a toggle and you just need to click on the track segment you want to identify, and then click on this button until you have selected the segment type and color you want. If you make some changes and you decide that you do not want to apply these changes, the software has provided a default values button that will reset all of these adjustments back to where they were before you made any adjustments. And finally, after you have made any adjustments, or even more common is just accepting the software default values, we need to name and save the new track map. So we just select the file name text box and type in the name of the track. In this case, the track was Sebring. After typing in the name, click on the OK button. The first thing we notice is the software is now showing the track segments we generated with our new track map above the main window. Also, now that we have an active track map, all of the functions requiring a track map should now be available for our use. Let's take a look to make sure. Let's select the View Menu item. As you can see here, the split times, track report, and lap replay functions are no longer grayed out and are now available because we now have a track map generated. Now, to show the track map, the quickest way is to use the secondary icon toolbar and click on the Show Track Map icon. And as you can see here, the track map is shown and the cursor in the track map is linked to the cursor in the main window. This allows you to know exactly where the data you are looking at is located on the track. As you move the cursor in the main data window, you can see the cursor in the track map is linked and moves as well. In closing, track maps are a valuable tool that allow you to view your actual track position directly linked to the cursor position in your data graphs. Creating and using high-quality, accurate track maps in Ray Studio 2 is very easy and can be done in just a few short moments and provides large benefits. For more AIM Insight eTraining content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support, your source for support and training of AIM Sports products when and where you want it.